Hello, and thank you for logging into this session. My name is Liz Dempsey, and I'm thrilled to be here today representing Grief Encounter at This Can Happen 2020. I've been Director of Clinical Services at Grief Encounter for the last three and a half years, and in that time have seen the amount of organisations improving and expanding their corporate bereavement strategies increase exponentially. What was once a smaller area of support for Grief Encounter has become a hugely important part of the work that we do, and not just in the current climate. Much of our work is providing best practice bereavement training and support to large businesses hoping to provide a comprehensive mental health package for their staff. So why are we here today? Prior to the pandemic we're currently living through, one in 10 employees at any one time are likely to be affected by bereavement. With the UK currently experiencing one of the highest number of COVID deaths per capita in the world, we estimate that 250,000 people in the UK are grieving as a result of coronavirus. As the bereaved and grieving return to work after their lives have been changed forever with little or no warning, it's imperative that we create a workplace culture that openly talks about death and grief. As a nation, we need to recognise the impact that the death toll has and continues to have on mental well-being of employees. So how do organisations go about spotting the signs of colleagues suffering from overwhelming grief? How do we encourage open conversations? And ultimately, how can you establish an empathetic and caring workplace? Firstly, I'd like to tell you a little more about our organisation. We're one of the leading bereavement charities in the UK, reaching and supporting thousands of individuals and their families each year. Over the last 15 years, we have offered free open access support following the death of someone close, and we work hard towards enhancing society's care of bereaved people, raising awareness of the bereaved as a vulnerable group. Our unique and innovative programmes are delivered by fully qualified clinical teams and offer a wide range of face-to-face -face and online therapeutic bereavement services including our national helpline, Grief Talk. Our offering is completely unique in as much as our services are not time limited and we tailor holistic care plans for each and every person who comes to us. This includes one-to-one -one counselling, group work, workshops, creative therapies and much more. So the reason I'm presenting today, bereavement in the workplace. By this, I mean either the death of one of your colleagues or indeed someone very important to them, perhaps in the team you manage or perhaps dependent on your business, one of your clients or one of their loved ones. The death of someone close can be devastating and life-changing. And I'd like now to introduce you to some of the people who we've worked with. 12 o'clock I had um, people <laughs> viewing my house. And at 20 past 12, I had his best friend knock on my door. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, having to tell my kids that their dad's not coming home. They had dinner with him the night before. And that's it. He's gone. I feel different. Sometimes in the night, I get really sad. I always cuddles and kisses and having fun with Daddy and Grandad because um, Grandad, when we had the cuddle, used to tickle me. <laughs> and Daddy did the same. Mm. My wife died five years ago, the day after Mother's Day. I picked my children up from school. I came home. Um, and I found her in the house. So I lost my husband four years ago um, in February. He died of a brain tumour. One of the big things I felt was that I had never really prepared the girls for the fact that their dad could die. Me and my sister used to get up really early 
uh, to play with my dad. And we used to play lots of games with him while my mum would, like, do some jobs around the house. And we can't really do that as much now. Everyone in this film either is or had a parent or relative working for an organisation. Many of those who were spoken about in this film would probably have been part of a team at work. And all of these deaths, as you can see, had a far reaching impact for all those involved in their various capacities. One person cannot be seen as an individual in this case. They have a family, friends, parents or carers and children. Grief is a multifaceted response to loss. It's unique for everyone and it will affect us all very differently. COVID-19 presents an additional set of challenges, including restrictions on the way in which we grieve, physically with social restrictions, meaning many will not be able to be with their loved ones when they die or be able to attend their funeral or carry out religious rituals with their families. So how can an organisation possibly put in place a suitable framework to support all employees in the event of a death of a loved one? Research also tells us that only half of all employees are aware of their employer having a bereavement policy or adequate support in place. In fact, the most common story we hear from employees is that they were given short periods of paid bereavement leave only to return to work still in a complete fog of grief. And while they often found the initial support they were given helpful, their organisations didn't have a framework in place to support their longer term needs. I'd like you to take a moment here to think about a loss or bereavement you've experienced in your life. Note down on a piece of paper. How did you feel when you were first bereaved? Can you remember that? Who supported you? What were the biggest challenges you faced with other people outside of your family? Take a minute just to think about that. When a colleague dies, it can have an enormous effect. As well as their friends and family, this could be somebody that you yourself, as a manager or a colleague, might have spent a considerable amount of time with. There might be pressure for you to help other employees, or you might need to have some contact with the family of the deceased. As well as grieving yourself, there will be others in your team that will be grieving, whether the death was expected or not. Therefore, it's extremely important that this is handled well in any organisation. So what are the signs to spot if a colleague is overwhelmed and struggling with grief? The changes in their behaviour might not be obvious. However, we know that if people don't get the help and support they need at the time they need it, the detrimental impact on their mental well-being and ability to cope can be long lasting. So for example, you may notice a colleague talks about sleeping difficulties or see a change in their eating patterns, or perhaps extreme weight loss. They might show excessive fear and worry or a sense of overwhelming sadness. You might notice they have mood swings, a sense of deep sadness, or you might notice that they show no pleasure in life at all, and they experience a social withdrawal. With a high percentage of staff now still working remotely, how would you spot the signs that they're not coping with their grief? It's very difficult and some of the signals might include taking longer to respond to emails or to answer the phone, turning off video communications when speaking to team members or maybe declining invitations to team meetings, unusual replies or maybe none at all to emails or text messages. It's not always possible to spot all the signs and sometimes we just need to use our management skills and our intuition to be aware of what's going on. Again, take a brief moment here just to think about how you could support someone in your team. What would you say? Take a minute to maybe write down three messages of support.
I can imagine it's not as easy as you think. And I wonder how you found that exercise. Although you didn't have very long, it's still something that's quite difficult to think about. So how can your organisation modify and improve their bereavement strategy to create an empathetic and caring workplace? Firstly, think about an immediate response. Secondly, it's important to know what the short term support will look like. And lastly, have a plan in place for the longer term offering of support. This can be relatively straightforward to implement and communicate. And if it's planned and delivered well, it offers a holistic and flexible approach. Make sure your organisation has bereavement awareness coaching or training for managers and colleagues so that they're given best guidance on how to support any bereaved employee. So here are some thoughts and tips for the first few days and weeks opening up conversations and making death and grief, uh, and grief something that is open and supported. Return to work, returning to work after the death of a family member can be overwhelming for some and it can seem like a, an impossible task. For others, it can be a lifeline to gaining some control, some routine and some focus. The transition will be non-identical for each person and a one-size-fits-all approach just won't work. There will also be a different range of responses to the more immediate and traumatic impact, and then perhaps in the long term, less intense responses. The most important step to being an inclusive organisation is to encourage healthy conversations and provide a platform for all employees to support one another. It's likely that organisational bereavement policies aren't currently adequate to respond to the situation we find ourselves in. Taking into account the traumatic nature of the pandemic and the scale of the deaths. So we would suggest that there are clear, clearly identified and trained staff members who carry out your bereavement procedures. It's important to upskill or to have some of your team trained as mental health first aiders or mental health champions if this is something your organisation doesn't already facilitate. It's incredibly empowering for a team member when they feel well equipped to support others in, the time, in their time of need. Offer the bereaved person, his or her line managers, unconditional support to deal with not only the emotional shock, but also the physical impact and logistical practicalities. Paid bereavement leave. Do you know how much your organisation offers? Ensure your managers are trained to make clear decisions of how to redistribute and manage your employees' workload and, and how to stay in contact sensitively with them throughout this whole period. Your bereaved employee should receive good information about counselling. This can mean the difference between a healthy adjustment or ongoing mental health issues. Communicating any death to all teams in a sensitive and well thought out manner with the bereaved person's direct team being offered extra support is vital. It's often best to disseminate information in small groups, making sure that the deceased person's team has the space to process what's happened. Team leaders and identified staff should look out for vulnerable staff and colleagues who may have suffered previous loss or bereavement and also be aware of colleagues with mental health difficulties. Then you might want to think about the short term, the adjustment support. This might be after the first few weeks when the, the employee returns to work. Bereavement is not a straightforward process. And as we know, the typical adjustment time is far longer than most bereavement leave provisions could possibly allow. Employees often return to work still in the grips of grief and good support here is really vital. People who've been bereaved may want to talk about the person who's died. One of the most helpful things you can do as a good manager is simply to listen. Give them the time and the space to grieve, even at work. If you're offering practical help, make sure it's specific and not vague so that your employee doesn't feel confused, but feels more clear about what they can expect. And then it's really important to think about the long term. Often, when, we're, when people are newly or recently bereaved, and more specifically when they're traumatised, 
they'll apply their own coping strategies. These may include keeping themselves incredibly busy so as not to have the time to think about, to face or to process their own feelings. At Grief Encounter, we know that the impact of grief is typically felt months and often years later. It's a long and painful journey and the road to adjustment can have no time limit. As a line manager, it's so important to encourage regular conversations to review and adjust the support that you have in place. As an organisation, you need to ensure that the bereavement support you offer is integrated within a wider wellbeing framework for wellbeing and mental health. Ensure professional counselling is available for your team members. Consider organisations to signpost to that would suit the needs of your staff members. Offer helpline numbers and information on organisations that can offer advice. This is where Grief Encounter can help. We're able to provide an immediate response to a critical incident in a workplace setting. We'll offer structured support following an unexpected and traumatic death, and we can support your teams in providing an excellent response to all involved. Our loss and bereavement workshops provide organisations with access to the latest developments in the field of bereavement. They can assist your teams in building emotional awareness of bereavement and mental health to better equip people managers to offer suitable support. Um, that would include understanding the physical, emotional, practical and social aspects of bereavement, encouraging a culture of open conversations on the topic of death, grief and mental health, offering a bespoke level of flexibility to accommodate a range of needs, supporting a connection with a wider mental health and wellbeing framework, making a significant impact. So please do contact us for all your organisational bereavement needs. It'll make a huge difference to all those bereaved in the workplace. Now's the time for business to respond proactively to acknowledging bereavement in the workplace. We must implement innovative, caring and active policies and procedures, plan for professional training and establish a compassionate, caring and supportive environment where grief and grieving are acceptable. Thank you for taking the time to listen. And if you have any questions or liked, would like to know more about ways in which Grief Encounter can support your organization, please visit our virtual stand.